Hey, it's Adam with Tech Dive, and today we're in Vegas Pro 17, and we're going to put ourselves inside of a TV. When I say ourself, I mean me. I'm going to put myself inside of a TV. One way to improve this effect from the get-go is to make some of the footage of yourself that you're using, or maybe not yourself, the talent, whatever you're using, is not necessarily looking directly at the lens, depending on the harshness of the angle. So we're going for the Heroes Medal today. We're going for a harsh angle uh, and putting ourselves inside of the TV at a harsh angle. That harsh angle, um, the realistic of it will be compromised a little bit by the fact that I'm looking directly in the lens, um, and not, you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute, but, uh, we're still going to be able to do this effect and I'm pretty excited about it. Now, this will also work if you're not doing a tube TV. It'll work if you're doing uh, any kind of TV. And there's a lot of reasons why you would want to do this in post as opposed to filming the TV itself. Uh, and we're going to talk about those as we go. But first off, if you're doing a 16x9 TV, that's great. Your footage is likely already 16x9 nowadays. Um, but I'm going to have to go to Event Pan Crop right here. Event Pan Crop. And I'm going to make sure that I'm on the very first keyframe. And I'm going to change it to 4x3, the aspect ratio to 4x3, because that is what TVs actually are. TVs actually are 4x3 aspect ratios. So here, now you can see that the 4x3 aspect ratio is over this TV. And you might be thinking, what TV is this? Well, this is just a TV that I got from let me remove this effect that's for later this is a TV that I got from Pixabay a little stock photo site I wanted a, a, an old looking TV and I actually don't have access to a tube TV anymore so you can do this with a video or a picture a video is obviously going to be more believable but a picture uh, will do for us today so um, here we got our 4x3 video and we need to get this inside the TV so we're going to have to go to our video effects tab which is this tab right here and we're going to select mesh warp. So mesh warp is one of the new effects. So you, if you do, if you don't have Pro 17, you might not be able to do this, or at least not at this extreme angle. You should still be able to do it if you're filming the TV straight on. But this is how we're going to be able to do it at an extreme angle. So we're going to drop mesh warp on here. You would use the picture and picture effect or a cookie cutter effect and event pan cropping to do it without the mesh warp effect on a straight on angle. Just saying that, uh, but we're going to use the mesh warp effect. So mesh warp is like Mario 64 where you can kind of move yourself around. Um, at the you know, if at the beginning of Mario 64 when you move Mario's nose and stuff. Uh, but uh, I have removed the effect. Whoops. What you need to do if you mess with it, hit reset mesh and then move the grid size to one because then you can actually put it inside of a TV just like so and with the 4 by 3 aspect ratio it's gonna be a little hard to get it there at first because you want the corners of the screen to hit the corners of the screen And any kind of any kind of perspective shift is going to really screw up the image. So you're going corner to corner to corner. My face is a little too long right now. Those lines follow those lines. It's a great way to make sure you're kind of hitting the right perspective. All right. So after some finagling, I've got it the way I want it, where I'm filling up this TV. So that is the first of many steps here the next step is I would like to cut off these harsh corners because the TV is kind of rounded and I've got these harsh corners so I'm gonna open up the event pan crop right here and I'm actually going to go to this first keyframe again and I'm going to select mask have mask checked right here and if you click on that first keyframe for masking it'll also do the same thing uh, so I'm going to have that selected and on it and I'm going to hit this pen tool and I'm going to create kind of a little curve simple mask there if you want more explanation about the masking tool 
please check out my masking tool tutorial. We're just going to be talking about what's relevant today, but that's not necessarily... If you're new to the masking tool, then I highly suggest you check out that tutorial uh, to get more information about it. When you select this arrow, you'll be able to select these individual pieces right here. Uh, hit Control-Z if you do anything wrong. I'm grabbing the whole thing, so I'm going to hit Control-Z. Uh, if you do that, just double-click until it appears like this where you only have one highlighted. So what I'm trying to do is actually we're in an interesting scenario where I'm cutting off part that I can't see because the event pan crop see is right here. I'm trying to cut off this corner right here, this corner. But when I go over here I can't really see it so I kinda have to eyeball the corner I'm cutting over here, not to mention the issues that we're having with the masking there. So uh, don't kill yourself over this depending on how important it is to land this effect just right. Uh, but you can spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time masking this effect right here. My only goal is to kind of create a more gentle curve instead of harsh angles because we're gonna do a little bit more to correct this image as well so one thing you can do zoom in and I'll definitely help you out there and I'm actually going to between these two points I'm going to select this tool and make these little arrows appear and I'm going to twist it like so create a curve just a There we go. It's kind of janky looking there, but like I said, no one's going to see this except you. Maybe I didn't say that, but I'm saying it now. No one's going to see this except you. So, again, it's a little bit tricky for masking. If it's your first time masking, it might not be a fun first time masking. Masking's not that hard, really, at all, until you try this, and it can get kind of hard. Go ahead and move these in just to keep it a little simple, simpler. You can curve that edge there. There we go. So now I've curved and cut off the edges. You can optimize that as much as you'd like, but the next step is actually to grab the cookie cookie cutter effect. So here's why we grab the cookie cutter. Cookie cutter is not good at cutting off the edges, but it is good at fading the edges. So when we grab the cookie cutter effect next, grab this square, drop it on. We're going to move that in front of the mesh warp. That's really important. See now the cookie cutter effect is happening with the mesh warp. We're going to get rid of the border. We're going to change this to a rectangle because a TV is actually 4 by 3 which is more of a rectangle than a square just barely. Um, then we're going to fill it up but then we're going to feather it. work with that dynamic there to get the way you want it. 
you can try a square too depending on your TV and your angle For me, this repeat X is actually helping. Usually that creates multiple images, but for the oddities I've got going on, that actually helped me out there. Okay, yeah, because I'm using two, two squares. So that actually, I like the way it does it there. I'm actually going to grab a separate cookie cutter effect. I'm going to layer it again and then put it in front of Mesh Warp. And then I'm going to this time select a rectangle and then uh, remove the border. And then I'm going to increase the size. Actually, sorry, did I say the rectangle? I meant the square. But we're not going to move the X. I just want this to start feathering the sides a little bit. There we go. So now we got this nice, gentle feathering right through here. Uh, that's a great, great step. Now, for some of you, this might be exactly what you're looking for. You got a color TV, high res color TV. You put it on. Uh, one thing I would still suggest doing is sliding down the opacity just a touch because the screen would still be visible normally. So g lowering the opacity still makes it f makes it feel like it's appearing on the screen. You still leave some of that screen there. So for some of you this is done. You're done. This is exactly what you're looking for. But for me, this still isn't quite right. I still have well, first off in the the mesh warp there, my face is a little little messed up. So you can That should probably be the hardest part of this. So, uh, but still, yet yeah, you still got a believable figure on a TV. Pretty excited about that. So, now the next step is making it look like it's actually supposed to be on this tube TV. So, some of you, if you got a flat screen, you can stop here. Uh, if you then we're going to continue to deteriorate the image more and more until it's more and more believably on this ancient TV. So next we're going to go to levels, not black and white, levels. We're going to go to levels and drop it on your image because you're actually going to need a more extreme contrast. So with levels, you can put it in front of the mesh warp too. Go ahead and darken your darks just a little bit more and brighten your brights just a little bit more because when you make it black and white, black and white has more contrast. When I toggle it, see, black and white just has more contrast than your average image. So just just give it a little bit more contrast than you would normally do and then you can come to black and white this effect and drag and drop boom now it's black and white so now this for some of you may be the effect you're trying to achieve now you might be done right um, but maybe not maybe you don't just want it to look black and white and on a TV maybe you do want to capture some of that interlacing it depends on how realistic you want it do you want it to, to kind of present as the viewers in the world you're creating would see it like this or do you want it to create as more of do you want it to be as more of a a uh, interlaced TV as if like a bro uh, documentary or something as you actually caught it on the screen. Just depends on your art style you're going for. So if you need it to be tv -ify, just go to the TV simulator effect. Grab the TV look and drop it right there. Now here, it's just a matter of getting it to your taste. I like the details even to be low. I want to lower the aperture grill. I want to lower the interlacing. You know, these are just extremes to show you the effect. Lower that a lot. 
Um, I want to, you cannot mess with the line sync in vertical because that with the mesh warp, just not going to work. And the vertical sync for the way we're doing this effect is not going to work because we're not trying to, we're not filling the screen, right? So then that, that gives it a very, very interesting film scroll kind of look which is neat in its own regard but not what we're looking for so go ahead and see because if you watched it it would do this so keep that in mind in case you ever want to do that in the future but um, we're gonna not touch those the scan phasing uh, I'm going to reduce a little bit in the phosphorescence I'm gonna reduce a lot so the phosphorescence is what gives it that TV look the cheaper and smaller the TV the more phosphorescent it probably is this TV just doesn't strike me as a super phosphorescent one but a little bit a little bit goes a long way there so just a little bit then a touch of static that antenna signal is not perfect just a touch of static there we go so now we've got a T, uh, an image inside of a TV, and we're just about we're just about done. So there's one last thing you can do to increase the believability of this TV is this is supposed to be casting light, and if your original shot wasn't casting light out of the TV, then covering this up uh, with another shot isn't going to still give you that feeling that the TV is creating light. So one way to cheat that inside of Vegas is to go ahead and grab the, it's way up here, the light rays. Grab weak light rays and drop it on the TV. Not, do not drop it on the, what's supposed to be inside the TV, drop it on TV. You're going to lower the sensitivity a ton. You're going to lower the strength a ton. You're going to hit bound radius. Now you kind of got a spotlight vignette thing going. You can actually move this to in front of the TV as if it's casting light down here on the table and the surroundings. And you can increase the X axis and the Y axis and kind of move it to fit still. You just want the light in front of the TV mostly. It doesn't matter if some of the TV behind it glows because light would in reality be bouncing around. But when you put it in front of the TV, now see if we toggle it off. This is without width. This kind of gives it the effect that the TV is casting the light in the room. And this is the light, the room is kind of lit equally to the TV. None of these are wrong. Uh, there's just another option if you want to increase the believability of it. Now the TV is kind of casting the light. Vegas is running this like a champ. Look at that. I got like 100 effects on here. And we're doing it almost real time this is like a, a, a 4k video um, that I'm doing all this to too so pretty excited about that so thank you so much for watching remember if you're new to editing you can always check out my Udemy course where we do intro to editing in Vegas creative software and three edit along uh, to three edit along projects then um, also anything you buy through our affiliate links helps us out a ton. This is another video in the 50 videos in 30 days marathon. I don't remember the exact number right now, but uh, we got a ton more videos coming out for that marathon. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.